Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out incredible new UX UI tools which are really moving the UX design industry forward and some of these tools are blowing my mind because of what output they can give and a lot of people have started to question the value of tools like Figma, Sketch, etc. in the design world because of some of these tools. Let's check them out. Before we begin, we are hosting the Delhi Design Event which is a complete day of UX UI talks, sessions, networking, 200 plus designers at IIT Delhi. If you want to join us, there is a 30% discount code given down in the description. Yes, you can get these tickets quickly for yourself and your teammates, your friends, etc. Come join us on 21st with some industry leading experts for giving talks, sessions and panels. All right, so the first tool we're looking at is by Google and it's called Gemini 3. In the past few weeks, designers have created these insane results, insane animated websites, designs, icons, product videos and whatnot with Gemini 3. With Gemini 3, Google has also launched Anti-Gravity which is their official IDE where developers can develop and code but much like in Cursor, you can actually just type in a prompt and it will write code for you. In fact, a lot of YouTubers have tested this out and some have gotten good results while some have been buggy. So these are mixed results that they're getting. But what's fascinating is that you can upload a video screen recording of a website or an application and it will try and replicate that website as close as possible. I tried replicating Framer's website, which worked pretty well. It wasn't able to give you the exact same effects, but a lot of the, a lot of the functionality, the hover effects, the animations were still intact. In fact, you can even ask it to connect to APIs and backend support to your application or your website as well through this which is very exciting. Another tool that is working on Gemini 3 by Mengto on Twitter is called Aura Build. And Aura Build allows you to literally just convert again prompts into beautiful looking websites with interesting animations as well. It works with Gemini 3 Pro, it works with ChatGPT 5.1, and with Claude 4.5 and a bunch of other models as well. Some are good for functionality or for coding. And he also has integrated an import for Figma button on the website itself. I will show some examples of what he and other designers also on this platform have created and built. A lot of these are more functional. Some of these are just more stylistic in nature, but he's given actual full tutorials as well on how you can replicate some of these results. There are pricing tiers, but for the basic usage, it is absolutely free. Okay, talking about free, Figma has made something free which a lot of people weren't able to access or was behind the paywall. Figma Make is now free. Yeah, I was able to connect with, I was able to log in with my free account and all of a sudden using Figma Make. I actually even tried to make one or two tools out of this. I'll have links in the description. If you're on a starter plan, you will have some limited usage of Figma Make. What I noticed was that it gives you good responses. That means whenever you type in a prompt or you type in an error that is, you ask it to fix it, it is able to fix it pretty well. And apart from a few hiccups, I think it worked pretty well for me. I think it's a great alternative to say something like lovable because it's right here in Figma and you can just go from Figma design to this. It just is a seamless process. So I would say this is definitely slightly better in that term. Now, a lot of you guys are using AI tools, but do you know how to prompt properly for AI tools? Prompt engineering, how to write for different tools and designs and stuff like that? Well, Prompta Core is here to help, essentially. So essentially what you can do is either get their extension, which kind of helps you write prompts right there inside tools, or you just start for free. It's It has no credit card, no nothing, you just log in through your Google account. You have an entire tool inside your browser where you can actually build prompts. It helps you manage prompts for any project. And with AI itself, it helps you set up prompts as well. So you can basically describe what kind of prompts you want or your, what kind of project there is. It'll help you fix it. It helps you add any sort of text or description for your project as well. And you can save your prompts as favorites and unassigned and stuff like that. So again, these are cool prompts. If you're looking to use prompts for like larger projects and you want to save these prompts for later or get the help of a tool, this is really good. Prompt our core. Okay, the next tool is where the future AI is heading when it in terms of brainstorming 
digital and graphical assets. So it's called pixels.ai and pixels helps you basically add multiple images and based on node-based AI or node-based editing, inside this canvas, you can basically attach nodes to different frames and each frame can have a different prompt attached to it. So for example, there's a bag and there's a lady. You can ask the AI to make the lady hold that bag in different positions, okay? That could be one. Or if there's a logo and you want a person who's wearing a scarf, for the logo to be on that scarf, you can attach those two nodes and that'll make that happen. So it's basically bringing in a lot of digital assets that you own, hopefully, you can basically ask it to do a bunch of different things based on different tools. So if it's to create a video, it will use something like Gen4 Turbo or Sora. If it's for image, it might be something like Mid Journey or let's just say Gemini. So it can use different kinds of models from different companies to bring your final assets to life for advertisements, for UI designs, for videos, for 3D assets even. It's boasting a lot of cool stuff that you can do. It has all the collaborative features just like in Figma and there are a bunch of export features and refining features as well. So you can refine it, you can upscale the image, you can remove something from the image, things like that. Okay, so the next one is a learning tool. A lot of designers want to learn something quick, whether it's AI, UX, product design, whatever it is. This tool, unlike Fraction, will quickly just convert your idea or what you want to learn and it will essentially make it into a structured course with quizzes, with video lessons, with links that are attached to different places. It will basically scour the internet, how it can create a good course for that topic. And based on that, it'll give you different chapters, modules, things like that. And you can just click on start. It's actually pretty well defined the entire course. For example, design thinking kickstart, practical ideas for college admin life. So you can even see what other people are creating or what other courses are available. And you can see in description what this person has requested from this tool to make. So essentially you can start making your own courses for yourself. It kind of reminds me of Notebook LLM where Notebook LLM basically summarizes stuff in the form of say a podcast or like notes. This is doing something similar, but in course format. There are other tools out there available. If you have any references, please let me know in the comments below. But once again, this is really cool because make your own courses, why not? Okay, Lottie Files, definitely one of my favorite motion tools out there, especially Lottie Creator, which is essentially their web editor to edit Lottie animations to add functionality to them. And that is where the new stuff comes in. Number one, they've introduced real life a physics engine inside Lottie Files. So essentially when you try to create a Lottie animation with Lottie Creator, in just a few steps, in two or three steps, you can add real physics to a scene. So if there's a ball and there's a object below that ball, which acts like the ground, you can ask it to create, add real physics to the ball and make it bouncy. And it will basically become a bouncing ball on that rectangle or on that floor. This is really cool because we haven't seen other tools do this. Even Figma doesn't have realistic physics. Only a tool like Spline, let's just say, has those realistic physics embedded. This tiny physics engine can add a lot of life to your animations, to your lotty animations, finally. They've also added Trim Path, which is basically just creating those path-like animation, like the hello Apple, hello animations. Yep, they've added that. They've even added state machines, which I will be making a full tutorial. So stay tuned and subscribe for that. But state machines allows you to add functionality logic boolean. So you can literally create a button in Lodi and if the user hovers over it, something happens. If some, a user clicks on it, something happens. If there's an error, something can happen. And the user can even give inputs. So if the user selects two, the animation will show two. Things like that. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can now do inside Lottie Creator, which is their editor inside the web browser, free of cost. While I'm making the tutorial for this Lottie Files Creator, I'm actually fascinated by a new feature called the AI Assistant, which basically just sits on top of your animation and you can ask it to add logic to it, ask it to add functionality to your animation, ask it to make an animation a certain way or theme. 
so much stuff that I need to discuss in that video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel because the video is coming just in a week or so. It's almost done. Okay, I didn't see this coming and maybe a lot of you guys did not know about this. I wish Webflow would be more active in the design community. AI that turns creativity into conversions by Webflow. Yep, Webflow now has, finally has AI features. I'll quickly go through some of them which you'll be interested in, which kind of brings it closer to a design tool. Number one, it has an AI assistant essentially, which they're not calling AI assistant, but it's basically like a chatbot where you can ask it questions about the tool. Now it'll be much easier to learn a more complex tool like Webflow. You can say, how do I make this move like this? How do I make this property visible? How do I change the color of this text to this? Or how do I add gradient to this? So whatever level you're at, you can ask complex questions and this AI will answer it. You can even ask it to change headlines and headings or even change text of CTA. So basically changing a lot of UX copy and it'll give you suggestions as you go as well. So it's not just a static AI, which just sits in the corner. It's giving you suggestions, which you can ask it, how do I improve my designs? And it'll tell you how to do it. There's an entire AI site builder now they have, it's called Build. It's still in beta, so it might not be available to everyone, but you can still check it out. I'll have a link in the description, which basically gives you full access to AI, build, AI site builder, whether you're building a hero section, navigation, pricing, whatever it is, you can choose from all these things. So whether you want a particular thing to be designed or the entire website to be designed, it's your choice. You can give those detailed descriptions. And you can create code components, something like Framer Builder. You can ask it to integrate Google Calendar into your website, for example, like a little, a little section that allows you to select calendar dates and then finally send it to the creator of the website, to you. That'd be really cool. You can ask it to create coded components without code, which is really cool. And it's once again, what AI is trying to fill the gap between design and code. Finally, I have found a source which constantly does prize money based challenges. It's called Contra and you guys already might have heard of them. They're a wonderful company. They're great for freelancers, but they have a bunch of challenges going throughout on their Twitter every single week or so. Every two weeks, you have like a $10,000 challenge. For example, there's this $10,000 plus cash prize by Retool. So Retool and Contra are doing this collaboration and you basically get to submit your challenge material to them and they can give you a prize. Why not? Similarly, there's another challenge I just had to bring up front. Spline does a lot of cool stuff. So Waldo, a design advocate at Spline, along with Spline, is doing this really cool sort of Christmas winter challenge. It's called a holiday challenge you, where you, you use either their 2D tool, which is HANA, or their 3D tool, which is Spline's 3D tool, and create something cool. I'll again, give all the instructions down in the description. All right guys, that is it for today's video. If you like the video, like the video. Give a huge thumbs up, comment down below if I did miss any tool or if you'd like to make me to make a certain video. Requests are always open in the comments. I read every single comment. And I will see you in the next video next week. Until next time, take care. God bless.